Welcome back everybody, this is Legitly back again with another video for you. This is going to be another tutorial on how to design your own GT2 pulleys. Uh, if you guys aren't aware, I actually design a lot of different things in Blender. That is my go-to for most of my designs for real life applications. And if you guys don't know how to use Blender that way, I have a Facebook group called Blender Designs and IRL. It is in my YouTube channel information, so if you just go over to my YouTube channel, click on the Facebook link, it will bring you to the page, and you can join the group. All you have to do is just click the join button or whatever the case may be, and I will accept you without any hesitation. And there is no policies or anything. You guys can upload any Blender, whatever you have, just as long as it's Blender or 3D based or whatever the case may be. Just nothing, anything crazy. Uh, you guys won't get booted out. I'm not one of those people that oh you oh, you know design in blender for animation if you do animation or Rendering or video games or whatever the case may be you can always join that group too I just try to design in real life to help you guys and I show the processes in my videos So if you are interested in learning definitely consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification bell whenever a new video is available for you so now that we're done with all the introductions uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about how we get started with all this. Now, GT2 pulleys are usually for 3D printers, CNC's, and laser engravers. Um, they use these belts called a timing belt. And they are a 5mm pitch. And they usually around 6mm thickness. And uh, so you have all these different types of pulleys you need, right? Or can use. And... They use them for gearing up or down for different applications for many different things, usually robotics and stuff like that. But there may be a time where you can't buy the type of teeth or pulley that you need. So this is a 20, you know, we have 60. There's a whole bunch of different versions, but sometimes you may run into an issue where you don't have the one that you need and manufacturers may not make it. So how do you get to around that? Well, I'm going to show you in this video how you can. So first, let me explain why I need to make it. This is going to be on a new video coming out soon, as soon as I finish building this machine. I've been talking and bragging about a new machine that I'm designing that is basically a camera control rig. I have a Sony a7 III with a Tamron 28-75mm to 75 millimeter lens, and I wanted to make my own camera control system like the very expensive ones you can buy for hundreds of thousands of dollars sometimes for very cheap and affordable with um, the ability to control it via G codes or any kind of uh, information like drag and frame stop motion things of that nature and um, I'm using readily available parts like uh, aluminum excursions for light 3d printers and CNC's and things of that nature and stepper motors like these 20 NEMA 23s that I have here. So, um, it will be a future video. Consider subscribing to check out that when it's finished and made. I'm designing it all in Blender as you can see here. Uh, the reason why I need a to design my own pulley is because I have a bearing here that is way too big that I have not seen a pulley for yet. So, uh, my bearing is 200 millimeters for the outer diameter circle and the inner diameter is 170 for the bearing portion and then the inner diameter hole is 145 so for something this specific i don't believe i'll be able to find a manufacturer that already produced something like this so we're gonna have to make it ourselves here so if i get out of here we'll go to google like always and look up how to generate the pulley that we need so there are some websites that you can use to generate the pulleys and try to get them to work the way you want. Or you can even use Fusion 360. The reason why I'm not is because I don't use Fusion as much and I don't want to sit through a 30 minute video. I'm not trying to make my video 30 minutes so I'm going to try to speed up here. Um, so once you look in Google, you're going to want to go to this website here, GT2 G-Code Gear Generator. So we click on that, this comes up. Already you have a 50 tooth pulley or gearing and then a through hole or center hole of three millimeters. 
So this uses metrics, which is great because I am into metrics now because metric system is usually for 3D printers and CNC machines. I mean, you can use inches too, but I just stick with metric because it was easier. Anyway, um, so now that we have our information, our through hole obviously needs to be 145 degrees, but we're going to use that information to find out what our teeth size needs to be because it doesn't have uh, millimeters it has just teeth so if you want to make it bigger you just add more teeth to it right but you don't know how, how big you need it because there's no measurement for that so since we don't know the teeth system we're going to use the center hole to find that out so we know that my outer hole needs to be 170 millimeters that I need to mount my pulley to because that overall pulley is uh, the, the bearing is a uh, 200 millimeters long but the bearing portion that moves is 170 so if I type in 170 it disappeared for that three millimeter it didn't actually disappear it's just it's so big you can't see it so if you use your, your mouse and scroll back on your scroll wheel you will see eventually the circle it just takes a little while to scroll out well, now we know this is our size that we need. This is the outer hole where our teeth gearing needs to be at. So if we, you can just click a lot to find it, or you can jump around a little bit. So obviously if that's 67, let's try like 250. 250 is pretty close, but not all the way there. We could try 260. Getting closer, maybe we just click a few times to get close enough and it looks like 267 pretty much got it we may be 267 268 i can't move it like i would like a blender screen or anything but it seems to be pretty accurate for the most part i'm gonna say 267 looks good and now that we have that we know we can leave our teeth at 267 for what i need and the, all we gotta do is just change the, the center hole to be our center hole which is two, uh, 145 and now we have it so we just figured out how to generate what we need now if you're using a system that allows you to mount um, bolts and nuts to like a uh, you have a shaft that has like a uh, some kind of flat disc surface that you can mount bolts and nuts to then you can use these but I don't I won't be using that I'm using a stepper motor off to the side here that's going to be connected to this so I don't need any extra holes so these number of radial holes we don't need we just delete those by hitting backspace and hitting zero and that gets rid of it now you think okay now we're done no we're not there's gonna be two other programs you need to use other than your web browser here so first you're going to want to export this information because we need the coordinates to move our machine to those specific locations to make the cuts or the drill bit holes or whatever CNC laser engraver system that you're using. So if I hit DXF export, it gives me the information I need. You can either, you can use, use DXF or G code, but I'm using DXF for my laser machine. So if I click right click, hit select right click again hit copy now we have all the information we need that gives us all that now that's all good and well but we still need to have a DXF file now if you already have a DXF file you can skip this portion if you do use DXF on a regular basis but if you don't all you have to do is go to Google again I just open up another tab free DXF files super simple I went down to 3axis.co clicked on it check, clicked on the first picture that I seen was a Hello Kitty which I'm not bad mouthing I love Jap Japan and Japanese culture so Hello Kitty is completely fine with me I downloaded the information came up here <clears throat> then we open it up where the file is it's in downloads now the next program you're gonna need is called notepad plus plus so if you don't already have it go ahead and download it open another tab google search notepad plus plus download it and get back to this video 
now that we have it and we just going to right click like i did hit edit with notepad plus plus then we're going to hit right click select all and then right click and delete so we get rid of all that information we just needed the information that this is a dxf file not that it's a g code or a like a jpeg or any kind of weird file like that we don't need any of those we just need to make sure that it's written off as dxf so if I do right click and paste, now we just paste all the information for our actual gearing that we made or pulley belt. So now we have that, we just hit save and then we can close. And you know, it's still gonna be the same name. You can change it if you want to, it's completely fine, whatever you wanna do. Now that we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and open up LaserCAD. I have LaserCAD, but this will work on Lightburn and the RD works as well, I'm pretty sure, because LaserCAD is like the lowest of the low on that list of laser controllers. The only reason I'm using LaserCAD is because I haven't bought uh, Lightburn yet. I would use RD Works, but I have a Trosen controller and it says that I can't use it because it doesn't use the AWC or D, whatever the heck this format information is, the algorithm or uh, the structure isn't going to be able to use AWC for it so I'm stuck with LaserCAD or Lightburn. I will get Lightburn in the future I just don't have it yet. Anyway now that we're in here we hit file import. Now you can look for specifics you already see it's here because I went to my downloads earlier to find it and then if you can't see it on here say for some reason it ain't showing you just click here supported files and search for specifics which is DSF. You click that, comes up, click on there, and it gives you a preview. Now we hit OK or Open. And now we have our gearing in. But the problem also, just in case you guys may run into an issue, I usually have trouble exporting out my STLs to SVG to put it into my laser CAD to cut out the stuff that I want because I'm always designing in Blender. So I usually use Tinkercad to get an SVG, then bring it into here, and then I usually have something like this happen, which I'm gonna show you here. It usually comes out to be super large for some reason, and I don't know why. It's gotta do something with the communication through programs and things of that nature, so I'm not sure what that's all about. Doesn't matter, I'm completely fine with it because I know what my dimensions need to be. That's one adding all the information from your dimensions comes into play so we know we needed to have a hundred and seventy millimeters worth of the outer diameter and 145 for the inner so all you have to do is just draw out those circles we bring out a circle go over here type in 170 by 170 And then we just click center it to the page and there you have it so that actually came out really well it's just a little smaller than the outer portion which is completely fine I'm not stressing that at all and now that we know we have that let's change it down to the 145 just to make sure that lines up perfectly because that's the one we want to make sure is completely accurate as well so 145 by 145 and you can see it lines up perfectly as well. You don't see any kind of off putness whatsoever. So that generator that I was showing you on the website here definitely is completely accurate and we just confirmed that. So now we have that, let's go undo, 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 and we're just going to select and delete that. Now it came up as a black lining, which could be a representation of an engraving we don't want to engrave so all i have to do is highlight this because we're not going to skim across the surface we want to cut through our material to make this gearing so if i highlight it all and then i click red that turns it into a cut and i have the cut set up for 40 percent power on my laser at 10 millimeters a second which allows me to cut through plexiglass. So I can cut this out of plexiglass with ease, with one pass and not have any issues. And um, it's a three millimeter sheet of plexiglass that I'm usually cutting out of, at least that's what I have in stock at the moment. But um, this works. So 
Uh, literally, now that we have that, all you have to hit is download, you put it into your machine, name it, all that good stuff, and then it goes over to the machine, and then you can cut it out. So I hope you guys are liking a video tutorial of this. If you guys want to see a video tutorial on how to design this and put it into a 3D printer to 3D print something of this like this, I will make a video in the future about it if you guys ask me to. I'm just not worried about doing so because I pretty much kind of know where I'm going to start off with it, but I don't know 100%. And I just don't know if you guys are going to even bother. So if you want to see that, definitely subscribe, comment, let me know what's going on, and I will be happy to make another tutorial video on how to make this gearing into a 3D representation. Hope you guys liked the video. Please like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think. My name is Legit Lee, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.